this one was never meant to be an artifact creature deck. This is supposed to be a spell slinger deck. Do I have your attention? Welcome back to today's build. I'll be your guide to this wonderful game we all love. Let's get started. Today's deck is another artifact deck. Or is it? His name is Urza, Chief Artificer, and this is the Iron Price. Urza is a 4-5 for 6 mana that gets cheaper for each artifact creature we control, gives our artifact creatures evasion, and makes artifact creatures that get bigger for each artifact we control. That's three abilities, two of them caring specifically about artifacts that are creatures, and one that cares about artifacts regardless of whether they're creatures or not. Just like Jota, we're getting the most value out of our commander when our cards appeal to all three abilities. And since the third will still count artifact creatures, we can and should be all in on artifact creatures. Unfortunately, being all in on cards with multiple card types like this means we are very vulnerable to mass removal. Anything that hits artifacts or creatures will send us back to the Stone Age. Instead of using up card slots fighting the natural weaknesses of our deck, we'll lean into it. The flip side of being exposed to more removal is that we don't have to limit our card choices to things that only care about artifact creatures. Any effects that care about either the number of artifacts or the number of creatures we have will both do really well here. Like Brea, our commander cares more about the quantity than the quality of the artifact creatures on our board, so we'll be playing a lot of tokens. But unlike Brea, our commander generates these artifacts over time, not as an ETB effect, so there won't be a lot of flicker effects here. Instead, since our commander generates value over time, we'll try to play him as early as possible. This deck is very deceptive. One look at Urza's abilities might prompt you to run your scryfall searches for artifact creatures that work well here, and one look at Urza's EDH rec page will confirm that. But in reality, a lot of those artifact creatures just suck. To start with, Noxious Gear Hulk in 45% of decks isn't benefiting from the menace our commander gives. We have more efficient bodies and more efficient removal, and more efficient artifact bodies that remove. Likewise, Cyber Drive Awakener in 33% of decks gives our artifact creatures flying. If they didn't already have menace, this would be great, but the benefits we're getting out of this card don't justify the price tag of 6 mana. If we really feel like we need the boost, we'll play Avon Wind Guide instead, since the artifact creatures we want to get through the most are actually just tokens. Ornithopter in 15% of decks is a free artifact, but it does literally nothing other than eat a card in hand and a slot in our deck. Zero mana is not a great deal on a piece of literal trash. This is gone. Padim, Console of Innovation, gives our artifacts some much needed hexproof. But our deck is most efficient when it's playing tokens, which have mana value of zero so we're likely never drawing cards with this. It's just protection for 4 mana on something that's not an artifact creature. Instead, if we really want the protection, Rebecca, Architect of Gascension, will give our artifacts protection from a lot of enemy boards and make them even harder to block. Not to mention that protection can at least save us from some of those red damage-based board wipes. And hey, Crypto Thrall gives us that hexproof we were looking for, and it is an artifact creature. As far as I'm concerned, Crypto Thrall is strictly better than Padim in this deck, and there's no reason for her to be here. Psy and Dig Side Engineer both care about casting artifact spells, but again, our deck is more efficient when it cares about tokens. We've definitely got artifact spells, but I've actually got more instants and sorceries in this deck than I do artifact creatures, and that's because the artifact creatures that help us the most, going wide, like Precursor Golem and Royal Warden, both suck. These are 5 mana for 3 artifact creature bodies, none of which particularly contribute anything to our game plan. The most efficient these get is 3 mana for 2 artifact creatures, which pales in comparison to spells like Clowning Around, Servo Exhibition, or Master's Call. Our commander wants us going wide with artifact creatures, and counterintuitively, instants and sorceries do that much better than any actual artifact creatures. This is a Spellslinger deck. One with the Machine and Phyrexian Rebirth both suffer from the same problem. They want us going tall, in mana value and power respectively. But everything about our commander wants us going wide. Instead, try out Machinate, Minion's Murmurs, and Monumental Corruption for card draw, and White Sun's Twilight, Phyrexian Scriptures, or Organic Extinction for board wipes that leave us in the lead. Lothiel and Thopter Shop both draw once per turn, but 3 mana for things that are not artifact creatures is questionable, and so far nothing about the deck suggests that we'll be sacrificing our artifacts or flickering them like we would in a Brea deck, so the synergies they contribute here are minimal. Instead, play Research Thief and Biden to Fassa, both of which are artifacts. Heck, Curiosity's Crafter may even be better than Research Thief in some ways. 
play this Esper deck like a Selesnya deck. Swords to Plowshares is a decent card, but it's not a way of life. For most decks, that life gain is negligible, but we're going to combat with huge boards and huge creatures that are not our commanders. Those life points matter here. This card has no business being in 79% of Urza decks, while Dispatch is in only 44%. And I definitely don't want to see it in any deck list where Dispatch isn't. Another good substitute could be Lens Flare on a budget, but it's low priority. So what's our timeline? On turn 1, we've got Esper Sentinel, Spectrum Sentinel, and Stone Coil Serpent. The blocking ability of the Serpent and life gain from the Sentinel are very important here, trust me. On turn 2, we have each of the three original Mana Mirror, along with Ornithopter of Paradise and Mirror Convert to help us ramp into things other than our commander. Turn 3, we would love to play our commander, but if we can't, we'll play Clowning Around, Servo Exhibition, and Charge of the Mites to spew more artifacts onto the field or be a later game removal spell. On turn 4, if we did not play our commander last turn, we'll play him now. Otherwise, we'll have Sram's Expertise, Ethereum Spinner, and Rhea Ebor Bane of Bladehold. Rhea Ebor here is probably one of the best cards we could have in the deck, since we only need to have one opponent who can't block our constructs to double our board presence every turn. To refill our hand, in addition to the draw spells mentioned earlier, we're playing Stinging Study and Rush of Knowledge to take advantage of our 6 mana commander as well as Painful Truths. With this much black card draw, we'll be glad to have had the blockers and life gain from earlier. Over the next few turns, our commander will supply us with a steady stream of board presence. All we have to do is protect it. Rootborn Defenses can supply us with an extra construct, while Emergency Wealth and Renegade's Getaway protect and recover our critical pieces while leaving behind more artifacts. You're keeping track of how many spells we're playing too, right? For Interaction, Spell Rupture and Protect the Negotiators both take advantage of the power of our constructs and the number of artifact creatures building them up, respectively, while Launch Mishap leaves behind another artifact, and you don't need me to tell you to play Access Denied. Our removal is extremely efficient. Since our commander requires our opponents to have twice as many creatures as we do to block, and creates a creature himself every turn, our creature count vastly outpaces our opponents, and spells like Innocent Blood, Shieldred's Edict, and Soul Shatter all take advantage of that. Our endgame comes in several different flavors. First, we can pump our already tall and wide board with cards like Tempered Steel, but since our board is mostly tokens, we can also run Inspiring Leader, Intangible Virtue, and Might Overseer to pump the team, as well as Junkwinder and Avid Wind Guide to make doubly sure they get through. And we'll go over the top with spells like March of Progress, Masterful Replication, and the most deadly of all, Legion Loyalty. Imagine all of our constructs gaining Myriad and smashing in for hundreds of points of damage. At the end of the day, we're not winning before turn 6. That's harder to justify and to pull off with commanders that generate value over time like this. Having more spells that generate immediate value than we do creatures makes it difficult for our opponents to interact with, and our combats are always explosive and frighteningly lethal. High 7. If you enjoyed this deck deck, please leave a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching!